Hey guys, my name is Sharon and I'm the marketing manager here at Lifestyle Aviation. I am a fresh private pilot and I am really excited to be taking you guys along for the experience of flying the Diamond DA62. It's a dream airplane for me. I'm excited to experience it and take you guys along with us. Notice how the nose is all stuck up in the air. Yep. Why is that? Do you know? Uh, because we've been stepping on the back on the uh, back steps and everything like that. So all I have to do is tap the brakes here. There you go. She squats she right drops down. Drops like down. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Makes it even easier to see over the front now. What do you need to see over the front for? You got synthetic vision. There you go. I mean, he's right. <laughs> we're, we're filing IFR. It doesn't really matter. Funny. So we got a 48-foot wingspan. Do. Kind of a little bigger than the one you learned in, right? About uh, it's 11, well, 9 feet longer, absolutely. I got oh, it. Oh, there's a DA-40NG, and you've been, you've been doing a lot of flying in a DA-40NG like that one, haven't you? I have, just like that. Got uh, probably 90 hours. Are you going to turn now. here, right yeah, there? Yeah, we'll turn Let's here. go up that way and go up on the ramp. So, Sharon, what's kind of interesting about you learning to fly, like, you know, in, in this modern era? Yeah is you've seen a little bit of everything. You've seen uh, old 172s designed from the 50s, right? Yep. Because you started in one of those. Yep. And then you've flown this plane in a single-engine version called the DA-40 NG with jet fuel engines. And that's an easy plane to fly. I mean, ev everything about it is so intuitive that it makes, so far, the transition to this plane is very simple. There's just two engines instead of one. Well, to be fair to the viewers that are going to watch this video, um, You've been flying the DA-40NG, which is essentially the trainer for the DA-62, because essentially it's the same wing, same control system, same engine controls, same panel layout. Feels pretty familiar, doesn't it? Extremely familiar. It's the perfect transition, and that's what uh, Diamond has done particularly well, because you start with that single engine, and you go straight to the, either the 42 or the 62. There is no other manufacturer that has done as seamless and easy an identical transition from singles and twins at all out there in the industry. Yeah, so far it feels pretty much exactly like the other plane, just a little bit heavier, and then of course you have two engines t to manage, but what management is there? There's not a whole lot to look at. Star 602, Mike, Mike, you are clear to the Mike Quebec Yankee Airport uh, via the Raleigh One departure, direct. Climb and maintain 2,000, expect 8,000, one zero minutes after departure. Someone's talking right now. Departure frequency is 132.35, squawk 1340. And for 692 Mike, Mike, we are cleared to Mike Quick Yankee via the Rally 1 departure, direct at uh, 2,000 for the departure, to expect 8,000, one zero minutes after departure. And the clearance is 132.35, 1340 for the squawk, 692 Mike, Mike. All right, Sharon, it's time to do the run-up. What's unique about this airplane is the airplane is fully computerized and it does its own run-up, which is, you know, uh, most of the manufacturers out there are building airplanes with engines from the 1940s technology. Diamond is the sole <laughs> uh, one that doesn't do it that way in the modern era. They use car engines and they're all computerized. But the coolest part, I think, is they do the run-ups for you. All your job is is to hold down the buttons to tell it you want to do the test, right? Yep. You've done this on the single. It's the same, identical. Easy. But you're just going to hold down two buttons instead of one. Got Let's it. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to start by doing. doing the voter switches. Where we're just going to change the ECUs from being set to auto. We're going to do the left engine to A. And you can feel that bump, yeah. which means that it's switching from Bravo to Alpha. So and then back to auto. And then to B, which means we're on B, and back to auto. And yep. we're going to look and see a little bit of a drop. We're going to press and hold these two buttons right here. It'll cycle the engines twice. Heat on the brakes. So you're holding the buttons down, and the computers are doing all of the work That's for you, all right? we're doing, yeah. Well, I thought it was funny how they do it. They basically give the pilot the job of holding the buttons. 
That's all we have to do, right? Yep. <laughs> and it's funny, I like to think the computer's probably a better pilot than I am, so. Well, it's definitely a better checker all of right. the uh, system. And so there you go. We did not get any failures. We are good to go no on that. No error messages, nothing. Or what's Remember, a gold damper? 692 Mike Mike traffic's on a two mile final now. Fly heading 160, runway two, correction, fly runway heading, runway 23 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 23 left, and we'll fly runway heading for 692 Mike Mike. All right, so let's okay. get out of here. So we've Last already checked. Check. We're going to come across, pumps are on, right, check double check it. Tower right. 4648, visual. Well, two, three, uh, right. I don't, still don't have a visual on that traffic. Runway 23 left, clear to land, traffic will depart, party or row. Go to land to the right, Delta 4648. You want to do the rolling start, or do you want to do the brakes? Uh, what, what, what do you prefer? It's, it's on, uh, we can go ahead and roll out. pretty good, that. so let's just, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and give it a full power. All right. Have a good day. Just make Eight. sure you're nice. All right, we got full power. Both full are power. equal. Airspeed's alive, engine's into the green. And we just double check that our heels are on the floor, no brakes. That's yep. good. We're just waiting. So we're getting close to that rotate speed, but we're just going to hold off doing anything. Yeah. And we're just going to wait for it, wait for it, keep waiting for it right there. Do it right there. Go ahead and pull it back. Perfect. Now you can go ahead and do that beautiful gear up process. Gear is coming Love up. doing that gear up on a twin, you know, plane. Number 692, Mike Mike, when able, flatting 290. 290, 692, Mike Mike. We'll go ahead and start that right turn. Yep, and pitch down for a little more speed. Okay. Go ahead and get up to 100 plus. Perfect. And once we reach our safe altitude, we will uh, go through our climate pitch checklist. Flying 210, runway 23, right, go for takeoff. Two, ten, All right, so we have really three, three things right, that we do. Yep, so flaps coming up. Flaps, readjust trim, and Are then so you're going to change Number power. 692, Mike Mike, connect departure. Over departure, 692, Mike Mike. 100 descending, 1,400. Is that departure? Yeah, that's 1,000. Uh, so power's going to come back at 92. Go to 88, 92, something like that. 90 is a good number. Roger that. Make sure we keep them even. There you go. It's not hard to do either, is it? Yeah, exactly. Right of departure, Diamond 692, Mike Mike, 900, climbing 2000. 692, Mike Mike, right of departure, radar contact, climb maintain 4000. Climb maintain 4000 for 692, Mike Mike. 1138, Washington Center, 135. All right, so today. we've done our flaps are up, our power is set, they're both at 90%. Fuel pumps are going to come off. Sharon, one of the advantages of the compression jet fuel burning piston engines is how efficient they are. You know, cause partially because jet fuel has more power per gallon. That's why it weighs a little bit more. And also the compression engines make better use of it. And, of course, they're turbocharged and they're computerized. So you're getting every ounce of energy out of that gallon of jet fuel. But we take a look at the range ring here. And we're doing our fastest cruise, right? Right. So we're settling in right here at lower altitude, 175 knots. Right. But let's pull it back to 88% and let's check our fuel burn. All right, so how much are we burning at that? 8.5 gallons per hour per side. So that's 17, so 17 total. at 175 knots. Look at that. And we can go to Chicago. We can go to Key West. We can go to Boston and Maine. <laughs> and, Almost uh, up into Canada. We can go to that. Canada. We can go to a lot of places in northern Michigan or Canada. Yeah. Um, and that's with our reserve. And that's with four people on board, all and our stuff. And a heck of a lot of bags. And uh, this is the kind of plane that everybody's always wanted. They want something that's fast, efficient, easy to fly, and safe, right? Not, Not necessarily in that order. Yeah, economical as well. Yeah. So let's talk about the engine technology even a little bit more. Um, again, the way Diamond saw the engine problem of, you know, Avgas having lead in it, and everybody saying, look, you have got to find a way to get around the lead problem. We got rid of lead in cars for the gasoline back in the 80s. Long time ago. Long time ago, yeah. And they've been trying to get us to do the same thing in aircraft for all this time. And it hasn't happened yet, but do you know why? Well, I mean, they haven't found a cheap replacement. Is a big part of it. That's right. Just technically, it's hard to find something that will do the same thing that they designed the lead to do in the engines. Yeah. So it might work for this engine, but maybe not that engine. So lead is a lubricant. But if they get rid of the lead, 
Those big block turbocharged engines, they really won't work at all. They'll seize up because they'll overheat. So there's really only one way to solve the problem, and that's what Diamond did that nobody else did. They called up Mercedes and they said, you guys make nice engines. How about we use your engine and we'll modify it to put it in our airplanes? It's really not that complicated when you start with a wonderful, high quality, appropriately positioned yeah. car engine. And it's, I mean, it's genius if you think about it. Saved a heck of a lot of time and effort, and they essentially just outfitted it with Jet A parts. Isn't that right? Yeah, you, you know, they had to modify the turbochargers to be right. appropriate and tune them for the altitudes they wanted to use. Right. And they had to build the special ECUs. Those are the computers. And what you're doing over there when you do that A and B voter switch thing is there's actually three computers on each engine. The way it works is the A and the B are the redundant computers, and there's a computer between the computers to monitor the computers. <laughs> Tells it what to do. So they built all that special as redundancy for um, this application. But they just had to basically make the cooling system fit in the cowling, make the radiator fit underneath in the middle, um, get the ECUs tuned up just right so they can manage everything, and just make sure the turbocharge was going to be able to manage the right altitudes for this set of the engine they wanted. We don't have spark plugs or magnetos. Like, literally, there's just a piston, and there's just a metering of the fuel into the piston to burn the jet fuel, yep. and it's just compression. Yep. Think about how few parts there are involved in that compared to... You have to, a cylinder, that's it. <laughs> yeah, and before we have two spark plugs two ignition systems, two magnetos, all the harnesses that go with it. And, you know, when you started to learn to fly in the older airplanes, what was the first thing they had to teach you about engines? They had to teach you... Prop uh, and mixture, hot starts, cold starts. Like, there was... felt never-ending. And they probably taught you how to burn off a fouled plug. Right. Well, that's odd. That's a little odd, yeah. But you have to learn it as a pilot. You're over there burning off a fouled plug and going, okay, it's fine. But in these engines, we don't have any plugs. All right, Sharon, we're approaching Smyrna, Tennessee. Um, been a nice flight, been smooth most of it. Yeah, it's been great. Um, really enjoyed the comfort in this plane for sure. Um, we've had a little bit of precipitation. We got to use the de-ice equipment too, didn't we? Put we did, it worked great. Yeah, we just we were down at 29 to 31 degrees and we're in the clouds, so right we just heading zero two zero to turned maintain on 5, the uh, TKS, right, loaded the wings, to 5, took care of that, didn't we? November 2, Mike, Mike, turn 50 degrees to the right, vectors for sequence in this morning. 50 degrees to the right for sequence, 692, Mike, Mike. So what are the things I have to be conscious of in a twin versus a single when I'm preparing for a landing? You just have a one speed that's different. All planes have approach speeds. Yep. We have one speed called blue line we talked about earlier where we never want to go below blue line until we know we've made the field and we're going to definitely land because then we can slow down towards stall speed. Yeah. But a, seven, eight, Romeo, that blue line, line squawk via far change to or above, approved, guess approved, what we can do? Day. We can right. always fly on one approved, engine. Calculator, yeah. 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 King of zero, Charlie, off the turn so right. So getting to the one, right one, altitude one, right. One, one, zero, is zero, something zero, that um, is key. When you start the approach, you want to be at the right Mike, Mike, to sit and maintain 4,000. Sit and maintain 4,000. Two Mike, Mike. So he's got you down to four. Departure Golf Stream 804, Alpha Golf is 3,000, climbing 4,000. Four, back. Heading 140. Golf Stream 804, Alpha National Departure Radar Contact. Let's go down a little faster. Heading 110, maintain 4,000. Another thing that's really cool about the DA-62 that yep. I love is the gear we can put out at any speed. Nice. It doesn't matter how fast we're going. It's like the ultimate uh, speed brakes. Speed brakes. That's yeah. right. Number two, Mike. Mike, reduce speed twenty knots to fable. Reduce speed twenty knots. Which is Mike, Mike. All right, just pull it back to about thirty-six percent. He's like, you're going too fast for us. Number six, Mike. Can you increase speed by at least twenty knots? Affirmative. We can do that. Eight, six, Mike. Right, your uh, best forward speed. Number six, Charlie Mike. You number one in the sequence. Pull it back to twenty. Eight, six, Charlie Mike. Let's just slow it down. Still, uh, traffic is nice. Stop for us. So watch this. Pull the gear out. King three nine turn left heading one six. Just pull the gear out. One six seven out. King three nine. King three nine. Count to the center. One two eight point one five. Have a good day. Yeah. One two eight. Count to the one five. King three nine. We'll see you. So should I have the fuel pumps on at this point, or wait to work for the land? I got them off. Okay. Okay. So now add back power to seventy five percent. 
All right, we're slowly adding some power. Because we're leveling off. Four, eleven contact approach one two four. Now he's got his signal that he needs, and we're four, down four, five, more than four. twenty knots. Turn four off for golf traffic. No factor clear. To Oscar, call to maintain one five fifteen thousand. Check to Oscar up to one five fifteen thousand for Alpha Golf. We have three greens. Got yep. the lights on. The only thing we do next is add the flaps, and we're already pre-configured, ready to go. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, you notice the 36% in a glide slope yep. descent. What happens is it brings us down to perfect speed. Yeah, for landing. Oh, yeah, and it's stable. You notice how it's above blue line? Yeah, this is perfect. But it's doing it itself. Yeah. So synthetic vision is going to put that marker right on that airport end zone right there. It's going to be like a zoom, a Hail Mary pass straight to the end zone. Love it. We're going to go through our checklist. I'm going to zoom all the way across over there and double check everything like I always do real fast. But then I'm mostly going to focus on the lights are on, the pumps are on, and the, the gear, gear is down. down. We have... Land, for two bucks, Mike. All right, take the autopilot All right, airport's in sight. Autopilot, we go to the right. Go Minimums. Minimums. Hold the nose down. Last Add the nice notch of flaps. There you go. Perfect. Hold that. Perfect. Just right there. Aim for those numbers at the end, right? Give it a little bit up trim to feel a need. Hold those wings level. Use your feet as needed. Perfect. This is perfect. We're a little fast, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the power back slowly, ever so slowly. We're not going to zero. Pull it all the way back. There you go. Nicely done. Thanks. So there's a, there's a braking action. We're Lift that wing a little bit. Gonna wait on it. There we go. Nice. Nice job, Sharon. Thanks. How did you like flying the 62 for the first time? I really enjoyed it. This plane is awesome. It feels so similar to the planes that and I've been Tally, flying, Deco, just a little bit heavier, and I would say even more stable. Okay, so, honestly, if possible, I think it's even easier to fly. Does that make sense? How, I, I tell people that, but why did why would you say that this is actually easier to fly than a single? A couple different reasons, one of which is that the wings are a little bit longer, the plane's a little bit heavier, so it feels more stable and not as susceptible to turbulence. Yeah. And the second thing would be the trailing link landing gear absorbs so much. It's really hard, I feel like, to botch a landing in this. So I felt like it was I really I think you've smooth. maybe done one landing before yeah. in this plane. one maybe. landing. And so here you did, you came in, you did it all yourself, and that trailing link landing gear means that you don't bounce. Yeah. It's bounces that get people in trouble on airplanes, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Here you are, freshly minted pilot. We put you in here. If I got out of the plane, not that technically you could or legally right. or whatever. Right. But if I did and you had to fly it. Yeah. I would feel comfortable. I would feel absolutely comfortable, you know, following the checklist like we were talking about. It's not that hard to go from one plane to another. And I think this plane is intuitive enough for the newbie. I think it would definitely be feasible. Well, simplicity and ease of use add to safety. Would you agree? 100%. So when and you're not feeling that feeling of overwhelm, you're able to make better decision-making skills as a pilot. Yeah. Okay. Would you say it'd be fair to say, those that are looking for serious transportation, no matter whether they're a single-engine pilot, a student pilot, or going to you know, be a jet pilot one day, that they should look at this level of airplane? Absolutely. I mean... You think about it, a multi-engine rating you can do in, what, three days, yeah. long weekend type thing. It's something I am definitely going to pursue, especially seeing how easy these planes are to fly. Kind of want one myself now. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, I'm just about to go sign a check. <laughs> hey, you hear that, guys? Let's go sign the check. All right, I'm going to put Hey, Sharon, order great flying. job. Fun flying with Thanks. you today. Thanks, John. Looking I forward to our it. event over here with the guys at Flying High again. I'm excited about it. Great plane, great day. All right, see you, everybody. Bye-bye.